Hello, hello. Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Welcome to this Friday English lesson. I'm sure it's Friday everywhere in the world. It's not Saturday anywhere yet, I don't think. It's probably close though. I haven't really looked at the time zones to see. But we'll be starting this English lesson about time phrases in about 20 seconds. Let me just confirm that everything is working. Looks like everything is. I think we have all systems go, we would say. So, give me about six, seven seconds here and we will start this English lesson in style. Well, hello everyone and welcome to this English lesson about time phrases. So, just so you know, this isn't an English lesson about time. I'm not going to talk about saying that it's four o'clock or five o'clock or right now it's 8 30 a.m. in my time zone. But this lesson is going to be about all of those phrases we use that have the word time in it. So, I just used one of them now. I used the phrase time zone. So, I'll talk about that as one of them once we get the lesson started. So, in this English lesson, We'll learn about phrases that have the word time so that you can talk about time better. As humans, we talk about time a lot. I had to get up at a certain time this morning and I had to do a few things before this lesson started and there are a number of ways to describe how we view time and interact with time as human beings. So, once again, welcome to this English lesson about time phrases. Hey, before we get started, a couple things. One, People keep trying to guess when my birthday is. I don't consider it rude. It's a fun little game. I usually never reveal when it is but I will say this that I think last year I said my birthday is in July or August and this year I will reveal that my birthday is definitely in this month. That's all I will reveal so you can guess away. Some of you have wished me happy birthday. Thank you. It's nice to have birthday wishes after the fact or in advance. So, possibly my birthday was last week or the week before but maybe it's next week or the week after. I'll stop talking about it. I've given one more hint about my birthday. I think last year I said that my sign is cancer. Um like you know the signs, the astrology signs or horoscope signs and this year I've revealed that my birthday is in the month of July. I am someone who was born in July. But anyways, uh before we get started, thanks to all of the familiar people in the chat. So, Brent is here from Speak English with this guy. Brent and I have a bit of a surprise coming up in July possibly. Not gonna give any more details. Gonna remain mysterious about that. Um I know that no, I, the more I talk, the more I'll reveal. So, I'll just stop talking now. I gotta talk to Brent about something that we have been talking about. Anyways, hi to Freddie Wolf. Thanks to Dave for being here. Hi, John Wedge. Hi to uh Ulia. I gotta put my glasses on today. Apparently, my eyes are not working well this morning. Hi to Sham, Mohammed, Un, Siun, John Wedge, Aid, Mode Eggs. Hi, Mode Eggs. Good to see you here. John from Brazil. Good to see you, John, as well. Let's see. Bienvenue, Nabez, Key Park. Key Park, a long time regular member. Good to see you here at Key Park. Uh, Iwa. Uh, again, Brent and Madi is here as well. Vitor, Ruslan, uh, Jocelyn, Lucas. I could go on and on. Hi to Lolly Lolly and all and Marcia and Bear Wilson. Good to see all of you here. But I'm not here to say hi. Hi to Zeev and CS team and everyone else as well. I'm not here to say hi. I'm here to teach English. So, l- we should get that started I think. I think the actual lesson Uh, should begin now. Did my focus just go weird there? Oh, maybe because I had the glasses on. Anyways, I'm speaking a little fast this morning. I'll try to slow down a bit and let's start this English lesson. Oh, should I do an audio check? I have a little post-it note on my screen and it says do audio check before starting lesson. So, here we go. Time and date. So, these two words often go together in English whenever you have an appointment. So, if you have a dentist appointment, you have to remember the time and date. So, they're not always together. I said they're together quite often but yes, you need to remember the time and date. 
Um, you need to remember the time and date for a doctor's appointment. You need to remember the time and date uh, of perhaps a movie you're going to go see. Maybe you're going to go see a movie with a friend this coming Saturday. It would be very important to remember the time and date so that you can be on time. Uh, it's good to be on time for things and you can be on time by remembering the time and date that something happens. Time zone. So, a time zone is the place on earth where you live and the name of that zone based on time. I live in a time zone in Ontario. I live in Ontario and my time time zone is uh I am in Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. We usually just say Eastern Standard Time but right now it is 8 34 a.m. where I am. So, it's 8 34 in the morning uh and I live in the Eastern Standard Time Zone. I think Brent is in the same time zone as me. Canada has a few time zones you can see here. Um a long time ago, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law lived all the way on the other side of the country in British Columbia and so, there was a three-hour time difference. So, when someone lives in a different time zone, there is a time difference. For some of you, it's later in the day than it is here. For some of you living in Europe, it's five or six hours later because you live in a different time zone. And then like I said, we often talk about the time difference. You know, what's the time difference between you and me? Um the time difference between here and France I think is five or six hours right now. So, the other day, I was talking to my friend in France uh and they reminded me that it was evening there even though it was 11 a.m. here or early evening there. So, when you talk about the time zone that you are in, you often also talk about the time difference between where you live and someone else lives. By the way, my time zone is the same as New York. New York is in the same time zone as me. So, there's no time difference between me and New York City. So, we have a phrase for the time being and we use this phrase to talk about something you're doing but only for a few days or weeks or months. A good example would be if you get a job but it's just a temporary job while you look for a better job. So, you might say this phrase this way. You might say, oh, I'm just working at the gas station for the time being because I'm waiting for a better job or I'm just working at the restaurant for the time being because I'm looking for a better job. So, when you say that you're doing something for the time being, it means you're doing it just for a little while, not forever. Oh, and we also have time change in some countries. So, this messes up some of you. This is not nice for some of you but twice a twice a year, we have time change here in Canada. Uh in the spring, it says over there, you turn your clocks forward and you lose an hour of sleep. In the fall, you turn the clocks backwards and you gain an hour of sleep because we do it at night. And so, that's why the time of my live lesson changes every six months uh, because we have time change and then we have to change our clocks here but you maybe don't do that in your country. Time flies. So, this phrase is often used when you're having fun. In fact, the phrase time flies when you're having fun means that when you are doing something fun, an hour goes by really quickly. When you're doing something fun, an afternoon goes by really quickly. So, we say, ah, time flies when you're having fun but we also use it to describe, you know, a good example would be when kids grow up really quickly. So, maybe you have um children or you have a niece or nephew or you know some children Um, time flies is a statement we say when we realize how fast children do grow up. Um if you meet your brother and you haven't seen your nephew for a while and all of a sudden your nephew is the same height as you, you would say, oh wow, time flies. An expression indicating how fast it sometimes feels like time is going. To tell time. So, the ability to look at a clock and say what time it is is called, we use the verb to tell time. We teach children how to tell time. I can tell time, okay? I'm able to look at my watch 
and I'm able to look at any clock in the world and I can tell time. Um I think clocks are universal. I should have done some research before the lesson but often children at age four or five or six are taught to tell time. They're taught how to look at a clock or watch and be able to say what time it is. So, I think when I was in kindergarten age five or grade one age six, I think somewhere around that age, I learned how to tell time. I can still and I still know how to do it. (laughs) Time off. This is something that we use. This is a phrase we use to describe when you are not working. Um someone might have time off during the summer. Teachers in Canada and in the United States have time off in the summer. Right now, I'm on summer vacation. I have time off. You might know someone who works at a factory and they get five weeks of vacation a year. That would be nice. You would say, oh, when's the next time you have time off? Oh, I have time off in a few weeks. I'm going to take two vacation days. So, time off refers to any time when you are not working but you can also use it to talk about school. You know, you can take time off from school to do something else. Time travel. So, I do like science fiction novels and I do like science fiction movies and I do like time travel. It's kind of fun to read a story where they travel in time. So, you either go forward in time or backwards in time. Um so, these are all pictures of different I think movies. I think we have Back to the Future at the very far side and at this end, we have Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, I think. Then I'm not sure what that movie is. Um that's the one where Tom Cruise keeps going back in time all the time and then I'm not sure about the Arnold Schwarzenegger. Is that Arnold Schwarzenegger? I don't know. Anyways, when you travel through time, you can travel forward in time or backwards in time and by the way, time travel doesn't exist. At least we don't think it does um but we have no evidence that it is possible. It's just something you read about in a science fiction book or see in a science fiction movie. Hey, let's do a few questions here. Let me see where I am. Let me get the first question on the screen. Uh let's see here. Um first question is from Nima. Hello, dear Bob. Hope you are doing well. I have a question about the phrase expression of interest. I've seen them on job sections of company. What does it mean? Thanks. When you express interest, it means you show that you are interested in something. I'm gonna try and relate this to the topic of time. Maybe at this time in your life, you're not happy with your job and maybe someone says, oh, they're hiring down the road at the factory. You could say, oh, I might go down and express interest in having a job there. So, you just would go and say, hey, at this time in my life, I'm looking for a different job. From Renata, my question might be a bit confusing. I hope not. We are in the third millennium. How many millennia were there before the one we are in? Thanks. Have a great day. I I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know how to disc- how to answer that. It's a good question though. Let me see here. What millennium are we in? We are in the third millennium. So, let's see here. Oh, I got you. Okay. Yes. I'm not super uh good at things like that. I'm telling time. In fact, it's hard for me to always calculate like how old will I be in nine years? Like, I can't do that math very easily. I know you just add nine to your age but for some reason, that is a challenge for me. So, the first millennium was from zero to 999 or zero to a thousand. I'm not sure. You'll have to look this up on Wikipedia to get a good answer. Let's see here. I think the next question might be harder. Ruslan. Hi, teacher Bob. I have a difficult question. Why as Einstein said, time on earth and in space, if you move at high speed is different. Please don't block me. I think they say time is relative. There's a theory of relativity. So, it depends on how fast you leave the earth and then come back. So, and how fast you go when you do that. I think I said that already. So, I'm not an expert on it. All of my knowledge comes from science fiction movies but apparently, if you travel at a very high speed through space, then time goes differently for you than it does for the people on earth. 
Here we go from Rachmaninoff. Rachmaninoff. Hi, teacher Bob. Which time phrase w- would we use if my friend says I will be there at 11 and he comes at 11? Does he come on time? So, there's two ways to describe this. Um I'm gonna use the phrases on time and in time quite a bit. Um when you're on time, let's say you start work at eight o'clock in the morning. If you're on time, you would be there a couple minutes before eight. If you came to work right at eight, we would say you got there just in time. But if you were a minute or two early, we would say you're on time. Does that make sense? Let's talk about trains. Let's say there's a train leaving the station at 11 a.m. If you get to the station at 10 55, I would say you're on time. You can walk and get on your train. You're on time. But if you arrived at the station at like 10 59 and 50 seconds or at 11 o'clock exactly, we would say that you were in time. You were just in time to catch the train. So, one is a little closer to the actual time than the other. Um let's see here. Oh, good question. Henry from Taiwan. Hi, teacher Bob. If you could do time travel once, what pivotal decision would you make differently in life? Thank you. Ah, oh, that's a good question. I th- sometimes think maybe I would start teaching English on YouTube sooner but then I also don't know if that works. Do you know what I mean? Because I started in January 2017. I had had a change in what I did for work and I also acquired a different computer that allowed me to edit video and we bought a newer digital cam- like a whole bunch of things happened that allowed me to start making videos. So, I don't know. Maybe that's one. Maybe I would uh but I wouldn't change much else. I kind I kind of like my life. It's a nice life. Uh Majed has a question not about time. Let's see if I can make this about time. Thanks very much, Bob. Do you have time to answer this question? Yes, I do have time. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, British, when I say it. Um let's see here. I am gonna skip questions that aren't on topic, okay? So, I'm gonna skip the next one. So, from Peter. Hello, Mr. Bob. Good to see you. Thanks, Peter. You too. My question, what's the difference? I'm gonna add a the. What's the difference between time change and jet lagged? I wish you, I wish you a wonderful day. I'm gonna take the have out. So, um time change is what you experience when you travel. If you travel from here uh to Japan, there is a time difference and there's gonna be time change as you go along. Like, you're gonna have to change your watch as you fly. When you get there though, jet lag refers to the feeling of your body still thinks you're in your own time zone at home but you're in a different time zone. So, when everyone's eating breakfast, you might feel like it's the middle of the night. When everyone's getting up in the morning, you might feel like it's time to go to bed. So, you feel jet lagged. Great question. Uh let's see here. I am gonna skip the next question. Sorry, there are a lot of questions off topic. So, I do kind of tend to leave those. So, sorry about that. Um let's see. Brett says, back to the future is definitely one of my top three move top three movies of all time. Good movie. That Michael J. Fox. Canadian? Maybe. I don't know. Uh let's see here. Uh mode eggs. Jet lag is when your internal clock is messed up because of travel. Yes. You're like, why is everyone going to bed? It it only feels like 11 o'clock in the morning. That's how it feels when you have jet lag. Uh Francisco says, hi, teacher Bob. It's a great pleasure to be here. Good morning from Brazil. What is the difference between figure out and find out? Oh, yeah. I've answered that a few times. I'm gonna leave that be because this lesson is about time and I'm going to get back to the lesson. So, sorry to dodge the question but uh I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Time out. So, if you watch sports, you know about timeout. If you have kids, you might also know about timeout and I'll explain the difference. In a game like basketball, the coach or a player can ask for a timeout. A timeout is when the game stops and the coach and players can talk for 30 seconds or a minute. It's different lengths in different sports um but this is what uh the ref will do or what the coach might do like timeout, timeout. They're making the letter T. 
meaning I would like the game to stop so I can talk to my players. Um and I think you can only use so many timeouts depending on which sport you're in. We also use this for when we're teaching children how to behave. If a child doesn't do what a parent asks them to do, sometimes the parent will give the child a timeout. They might have to sit on the stairs for a minute or they might have to sit on a chair in the kitchen and they're not allowed to go anywhere while they think about what they've done. So, a timeout is a common way to train children to teach children how to behave but it's far more common to use this when talking about sports. Time limit. So, this is something that can cause stress. The other day, I had to renew my driver's license because it's July. So, somebody had a birthday but I had to renew my driver's license and I could do it online but when I started the process, there was a timer saying I had 10 minutes to finish it. There was a time limit. So, when something has a time limit, it means a clock is running and you only have so much time to do something or complete something. So, I very quickly tried to do all the renewal stuff and it took me quite a while. Not 10 minutes but it was a little stressful that there was a time limit. Sometimes there's a time limit. Um maybe something's on sale and they'll say for a limited time only. That means there's a time limit. That means you only have a few days to buy that item that is on sale. A timeline. So, this is the timeline of different social media apps and a timeline is this really nice visual graphic of what has happened over time. If you ever studied history in school, um you probably have seen or made timelines. So, they might say create a timeline about the history of Canada from 1800 to 1900. So, you would draw a line and you would put the date 1800 and 1900 and you would put important events on the timeline and describe each of them. So, something that you commonly see in school but you also might see when you're reading a magazine or other news article. Time lapse. So, a time lapse is a technique that you use when uh taking a photo where you yeah, I gotta I I think I'm better off describing it with video. So, a time lapse is when you take a picture maybe every minute and then you put all those pictures together and then when you play them, you can see it move. Let me get the dictionary definition of time lapse because I think there's a couple different meanings of time lapse. Meaning of time lapse. So, the technique of taking a sequence of pictures at set intervals to record changes that take place slowly over time. Frames can then be combined and watched as a video to sh- at normal speed showing the action much faster. So, hopefully that made sense but I think you understand what a time lapse is. It allows you to um like if I was to do a time lapse of this lesson of me here and then you would watch the whole lesson in one minute and it would just be one picture of me every minute for an hour. So, it would end up being 60 seconds long if it was 60 frames per second. Hopefully, I explained that well. I'm not sure I did but I think I always I'm always allowed one slide during the lesson that I don't explain well and then you can figure it out on your own. Time management. This is something that you want to be good at. It's a good skill to have. When someone has good time management skills, when they're good at time management, it means they are really good at planning things. If your boss isn't really good at time management, it's probably not a fun place to work. Things probably happen late or early or not at all and so, it's nice when you work with people or when you work for people who have good time management skills. They write things down in a calendar. They write down the time and date of things. They communicate well with people like don't forget the meeting starts at nine. They have really good 
a really good ability to manage their time and if they're in charge of other people to manage the time of others. Time management. From time to time. So, this phrase is used to talk about something that you don't do very often. Something that you do every once in a while. That's another English way to describe it. So, here's how I would say this. Most people from time to time will travel. They don't travel every day. They don't go on vacations every day but from time to time they'll go and visit someone far away. Jen and I go and see a movie from time to time. That doesn't mean we go every weekend or every day or every month. It just means that every year we see about four or five movies. So, we go see a movie from time to time. Some of you watch these English lessons from time to time. Some of you come every week but some of you just watch one from time to time. You don't watch one every time I do one. Sorry, I have a little tickle in my throat. I'm gonna go over here for a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I got rid of that. <clears throat> I should cover the mic. <clears throat> Sorry to do that in the middle of a lesson but uh, sometimes when you talk, your voice gets a little scratchy. It's from all the uh yelling I did at my birthday party or did I? Maybe my birthday party is next week. We'll see. Time to kill. When you have time to kill, it means you are waiting. You're somewhere and you really can't, you don't have anything else to do. The best example I can give is this. Sometimes my kids um have an appointment. So, I'll bring them to the dentist and then I have time to kill. While they go see the dentist, I have time to kill. So, usually I go on my phone. I reply to some comments. I might run and get some groceries um because when you have time to kill, it's nice to fill that time. There's another phrase. It's nice to fill that time with some errands or to get something done. So, if you are ever um a good example too would be if you're traveling and if you land at one airport and then your next flight doesn't leave for four hours, you would say, oh, I'm gonna have four hours to kill. I'm gonna have time to kill. So, basically, you can sit at the airport and study English. That's what you should do when you have time to kill. A timetable. So, a timetable is basically an outline of your week with important things on it and it's mostly used at least in Canada where I live when talking about students. Students will receive their timetable at the beginning of a school year if they are in a high school or if they're in college or university. The timetable will show what classes they have on certain dates. This timetable I think says something about Bob watch Bob's new video and live lesson. I think that's what I put those words on there but A timetable again, very commonly used when talking about students and it's common uh, to have a kind of a an outline of when you have classes and sometimes where you have them. So, that is a timetable. Time will tell. So, this is a phrase we use when we're not sure when something will be finished or we're not sure what the future will look like for someone. So, here's a couple of examples. Maybe there's a house being built and they don't seem to be working on it very often. You're not sure they're ever going to get done. So, you could say, well, time will tell. Like, if we wait long enough, we will find out if the house is going to be finished. Maybe you know someone who's in university and they're not doing well and you might say, do you Someone might ask the question, do you think they'll graduate? And you could say, oh, time will tell. So, basically, you're saying um if you wait long enough, time will reveal the answer to the thing you are thinking about. Time will tell. Time to. So, we start a lot of sentences with time to. Um probably a common one would be time to eat. So, when I'm making supper, when supper is ready after I'm done cooking the food. In my house, I might say time to eat. Like, I might yell time to eat so my kids know that it's time to eat. I might text Jen and say time to eat. 
with a smiley face. We also say time to go like in the morning when we're getting ready. Um when it's the time where we need to leave, I'll I'll say time to go. Um or my kids might say, is it time to go? Is it time to eat? That's another common question in my house. So, we do start a lot of sentences with this. Time to go. Time to eat. Um time to start the lesson. Uh it's a it's a fun way to start a sentence. Ahead of time. So, this person is making dough. I'm going to assume they're making pizza dough. When you make pizza dough, you want to make it ahead of time. What that means is if you want to eat pizza at night, you need to make the dough in the morning. You need to make it ahead of time. You can't make pizza dough when you want pizza because it has to rise and you have to knead it and it has to sit for a bit. It takes a few hours. So, you make the dough ahead of time. Whenever you do something ahead of time, you do it before you actually need it. So, what's another good example? Um if I was going to go for a bike ride, I would wanna make sure, I would wanna check the bike ahead of time to make sure the tires are pumped up. I wouldn't want to check over the tires and the bike the minute I want to ride. I want to do that ahead of time. Um let me see. What's another good example? I'm trying to think of another good example. Cooking is a great example, right? Um if you have a lot of people coming over and you're making a big meal, you might wanna prepare some of the ingredients ahead of time. You might wanna chop up the vegetables and have everything in the fridge ready to go. You want it ready ahead of time. Hey, let's do members only chat. Let me get that set up for a minute if I can find the right button. Uh for those of you that don't know what members only chat is, some people are members. You can tell who is a member because their name is green. So, if you look at the chat and you see a person with a green name and a crown, they are members. They have clicked the join button below and decided that they want to support me and the work I do here teaching English. So, first of all, thank you to everyone who is a member and then also members, you can ask questions directly in the chat and I will continue to answer questions, these questions. Uh, from the queue as well. Uh let's see. Mode says backing up. Ulia, yes. Also, he did another time lapse in one of his lessons in New York City. That was really nice. You could see the business busyness of the city. Yes. Yeah. Did Brent do some time lapses? That'd be cool. Yeah. Those are cool. Mode says, Mr. Bob's built out a range of songs while driving. Yeah. I think we were at market last night and the air It wasn't, you know, we have bad air quality in some parts of Ontario still, not from the fires but just from industry and pollution. So, there was bad air quality and I wonder if that affected my throat a little bit. Anyways, let me get a lesson, uh, a question on the screen here. Remember, I am going to skip questions if they're not on topic. Hafiez says, hey, Coach Bob. Hi, Hafiez. Look nice with a new haircut. Thank you. I did I do still feel like it's a little too short but that's okay. It hair grows back. I've seen a video where Gen Z, the oldest would be 27 years old. They can't read an analog clock and they don't know the term clock where the term clockwise comes from. Wild, eh? So, a couple little fixes in there. Yeah, I never thought about that but you have clockwise and counterclockwise, right? That's how we describe how something turns. Um Like in order to open this, I have to turn it counterclockwise. You also have to be strong apparently. There. Uh so and then I turn it clockwise in order to tighten it. Interesting. I didn't know that. I think most of them though can tell time with an analog clock. I know it's starting to be cool to buy an analog watch. So, Gen Z is getting hip and cool by buying watches like that. Yeah, I did want to scroll back and say hi to Diesel Lee who says, thanks for teaching. Good evening, teacher Bob. Thank you so much for the super chat and also thanks to New Words with MP who has gifted a membership to my channel to someone and gifted it to, let's see here, Caitlin Molina was gifted a membership. Very cool. Awesome. I'll do one more question from the forum and then I'll jump to the chat members. Uh let's see. CS team. Hello, Bob. I hope you are doing well. My question is, you liked a movie about time travel? Dark, one of my favorite movies. 
I don't know. Is that a movie or TV show? I don't remember. But there is a show where they crawl through a cave and then they come out in different uh times. Um I think it takes place in Europe somewhere. Maybe that's what you mean. I'm not sure. I will check it out though. Thanks to Esteem. Uh from the chat. Mode says, I like how some people are giving you hearts and some are giving you party poppers because they think it's your birthday. I will neither confirm nor deny that today is my birthday. See, I think last year and the year before, I would say things like people would say happy birthday around this time of year and I would say it's not today and then that would give people a clue. So, if you watched me long enough, you'd be able to figure it out. So, I will neither confirm nor deny. Maybe it is my birthday today. Maybe it's maybe it isn't. I don't know. Would I be doing a live stream on my birthday? Yeah, probably I would do that. But anyways, Key Park, I shot a time lapse video of blooming on my serious flowers. That flower bloomed and closed in two hours. It is cool when people do a time lapse of a flower because you can see it open up. Very, very cool Key Park. Wanda says, hi, teacher Bob. Do you complain about lack of time? Sometimes I do complain. Thanks. Yes. At this point in my life, I feel like I don't have enough time in a day. That's how we describe that. That's what we say in English. It's like, ah, it feels like there's not enough time in a day to get everything done. So, yes, I do definitely feel that sometimes that there's not enough time in a day or we say there's not enough hours in a day. We'll say that as well. Lolly Lolly, 14 July is an annual national holiday in France symbolizing the end of the monarchy. Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Very cool. And Lolly says hi to Wanda. CST, my mistake, that's TV series. Yeah, I think maybe I did watch a bit of it then. Is that the one where the boy goes in the tunnel and he comes out and there's a a power plant or something? I think I did watch one or two episodes. I should revisit it. No, that says, hi, Mr. Bob. Fading and faded are also related to time, right? I heard in a song by Ed Sheeran. So, memories fade over time. And I didn't talk about the phrase over time but as time goes by, memories will fade and I'm not sure if that's what Ed Sheeran is talking about in his song but that's when you talk about fade, we usually say, oh, memories fade over time. Let's see here. Wanda saying hi to Lolly. Freddie says, hi, Bob. I hope you've got my, I hope you've got many presents for your birthday if this day has already arrived <laughs> yet. Sinon, je te lui, je te le souhaiterai. That's a hard verb for me. Souhaiterai tous les jours pour être sûr de ne pas la rater. Ha, ha, ha. Merci beaucoup. Uh, mon anniversaire. Vitor, thank you for spending some time with us, Bob. No problem. I do enjoy this. Key Park says, happy national holiday to Lolly. Let me get another question from the forum and if members have more questions, I will revisit it. Erwin says, the doomsday clock setting of 90 seconds to midnight. What does it mean? Little fix there. What does it mean? So, the doomsday clock is not actually a clock. It's more of a a time that symbolizes how bad pollution and global warming and all of that stuff is on earth. So, they set the doomsday clock based on how well we're taking care of the planet. What is the doomsday clock? Let me look that up for a sec. Um let's see, let's see, let's see. So, it says the doomsday clock is a symbol that represents the likelihood of a human-made global catastrophe. Ooh. So, basically, um some really smart people look at where the world's at in terms of how we're getting along and how well we're taking care of the planet. So, that's what that means, Irwin. Julie says, when is the best time or your happiest time in your life? Best wishes to you for your upcoming birthday. Well, birthdays for me are not a happy time. I don't like getting older uh but the happiest time in my life, um I do enjoy right now. I always enjoy the moment I'm in. So, I know that's not a specific time but I'm having a nice day today. So, I've always been someone who enjoys the moment that I'm currently living in but I also enjoy things like when Jen and I first met and when we got married, that era was very enjoyable. Uh and then before that, I would just think of probably childhood like when you're young and free. When you're 10 or 11, 
and you have no responsibilities, that is a great time in life as well. Uh let's see here. Um Modeg says, allons en fond de la partie. Carry on with the singing. Puis la pète, la fête. Pas la pète. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Pin Sunshine says, hello teacher Bob, how are you? I have a question. If you make an appointment with your friends and they don't show up on time, what will you do? Thank you. Well, they're, I would text them like, hey. So, that's the beauty of phones, right? A long time ago, if you planned to meet with someone uh, and they didn't show up, you couldn't you couldn't quickly text them or send them a message to say, hey, are you running late or something like that. So, uh right now, if I was going somewhere and I was meeting friends and they didn't show up, that's what I would do. Hey, a sad day for uh Bob. So, I don't know if it'll focus on this but my phone No, it's not gonna focus on it. I don't know if you can see that. My phone has started to come apart. The battery inside is um expanding. So, I have to buy a new phone and I do not like spending money and I don't think I can get it replaced. But my phone is very old. It's a Pixel 3. It's a pretty old phone. But uh yeah and I'm I hope it the battery doesn't start on fire. So, anyways, I'm off topic. Where were we at? Back to the chat. Uh Naomi, hi teacher Bob. Have you ever put something in a time capsule? Ye- I haven't but my kids have. We have one buried on the farm somewhere that we are going to dig up in 10 years I think. It was a school project uh from one of my kids. Lolly says, haha, mode eggs, allons enfants de la de la patrie. Not partie. I think this is a typo or a joke. Ah, I see. Know that. The lyric part in the song is, will never fade like graffiti on the overpass. Yeah, so when something fades, it slowly disappears. When you talk about, he's just kind of making a reference to that we as people will always be alive and vibrant. We won't fade like the graffiti. John says, oh, I'm at work right now and I had to step out of my office for a bit. Uh, I ended up missing a bit of class and members time. Sorry, John but you're here now. So, that is awesome. Hey, let me turn off members only chat and get back to the lesson. Let me find the right button for that. I should buy one of those. You can buy like a controller when you do live streams where you can just push buttons on a box instead of on the computer. I think I'm doing this right now. Uh let me just see how many questions there are. Um one more question from Natalia. Hello, the wisest teacher Bob. Please tell us, do you think time is something relative like Einstein had once claimed? I don't know. I do know this. Time, as you get older, time does seem to go faster. I think because you are busier. So, anyways, I don't know much about the theory of relativity but uh I would say definitely for me personally, the older I get, the faster time seems to go. Here we go. The first time. So, when you talk about doing things, if it's something you've never done it before, then when you start doing it, that's the first time. So, the first time I rode a bike, I fell off. The first time I tried to skate on ice, I fell. Um the first time I drove a car, I was really really scared. I didn't like driving when I was 16. So, the first time So, whenever you talk about something that you that you've never done and then you start doing it that there's always the first time, okay? Um the first time I climbed a tree, I fell I fell out. I remember that as a really little kid, the first time I climbed a tree. I think it was the first time. Um we also have the last time and this kind of has a couple of meanings. So, one would be this. Uh, this person is obviously graduating. So, um this is the last time that they'll be at this school. This is the last time that they have to write an essay. So, the the time it's when you don't have to do anything anymore. So, I was happy because when I finished university, um when I wrote my last exam, it was the last time I would have to write a test although I did do tests after that. We also use this to talk about the most recent time that we did something. So, the last time I drove my van was about an hour and a half ago. I brought one of my kids to work. 
The last time I had a sip of water was about three minutes ago. So, I'm going to have another sip now. So, it can mean you know you're doing something in life and then that point where you stop doing it, that's the last time you do that thing. Um but it can also refer to the most recent time. You know, the last time I held up my phone was five minutes ago and here's my phone again. It's broken. I'm sad. So, couple different meanings there. Next time. So, next time um I'm going to teach a lesson I think about gigantic things. So, I'm referring to there's a series of English lessons and I'm talking about next time as opposed to last time, okay? Uh, Last time I talked about tiny things, right? Was that last week? This time I'm talking about um time phrases and next time I think I might do a lesson on gigantic things. We'll see. That lesson's half done. I'm not sure I'm going to do it. A good time. When you are enjoying something, you are having a good time. I hope that when you watch these English lessons, you have a good time. When you have a good time, you're happy. You're enjoying the thing that you are doing. I have a good time when I'm teaching these lessons. Um I have a good time when Jen and I go see a movie. It's a good time. We have a good time together. So, a very simple phrase but I hope that most of you are having a good time right now. Once upon a time. So, this is how a lot of fairy tales start. Fairy tales are like old stories about um you know wizards and um knights and those kinds of things and um fair maidens. So, they often start with once upon a time. There's a TV show I think that has this as a title um but you might have a story where it's like once upon a time there was a man who lived on a farm and it tells the story and that's how it is introduced. A very common way to introduce that. To waste time. So, I don't like it when my kids waste time. I actually don't like it when anyone wastes time. Sometimes at work, I'm in a meeting and someone will talk forever and I don't like it because they're wasting time when they do that. I'm they're not contributing to the meeting. (laughs) Sorry. Hopefully, none of my colleagues are watching. So, when you waste time, you are not working hard. You are not being productive. You are not playing as a a, like you're not a good member of the team. So, this person um has decided to waste time. It's not good to waste time. I think in French, it's is it gaspiller? Is that the word? The verb gaspiller? In the chat, maybe someone can let me know but to waste time. It's gaspiller or gâcher? I don't know. I should stop saying French words because who knows what I'll say. <laughs> to take time. Um in English, we talk about this when it's important to do something. So, it's important to take time to visit older people. It's important to take time with friends. It's important to take time to do something properly, okay? So, when you take time, it means you intentionally decide to spend your time with some people, okay? So, you need to take time. Um now, I'm gonna add a word here. When you take your time, it means to go slowly but when you take time, It means you intentionally decide. So, I take time every week to visit my mom. I haven't actually visited my mom for a couple of weeks because I did just see her a few days ago. Not for my birthday just so you know but I did just see my mom uh, a couple of days ago Um, but usually I take time every week to visit my mom. And Freddie Wolf says, yes, gaspiller, perdre, gâcher. Merci beaucoup. To have time. So, simply put, you either have time or you do not have time, okay? So, obviously, you have time this morning to watch this lesson. I have time to teach this lesson. Maybe last week, you did not have time and so, you didn't come to the lesson. Maybe next week, you will have time and you will be able to come to the lesson. So, this is probably one of the more common ways to talk about whether you can or can't do something, okay? Sometimes people will say, I didn't have time to eat breakfast this morning. I have some students who say, oh, I'm so hungry. I didn't have time to eat breakfast this morning. Um it's not good to not eat breakfast by the way. 
sometimes students are like, oh, it's nice to have time um to just sit and talk instead of learning new things. Sometimes students like to just have time to talk. And give it time. So, this person obviously injured themselves and one of the things that happens when you injure yourself is you get very, very frustrated but sometimes you just need to give it time. You need to be patient. So, basically, give it time means be patient. If you hurt yourself, you have to give it time. It does not heal instantly. It won't heal by tomorrow. Okay? So, you need to give it time. You need to just let your finger heal so eventually you can get back to doing the things that you want to do. You need to give it time. Some of you might have too much time on your hands. I'm happy that you've come and that you are watching the lesson. I'm glad that you had time but sometimes people have too much time on their hands or you might have too much time on your hands. This is often true of children in the summer in Canada because there's no school and they're too young to get a job and they don't know what to do every day. Maybe they don't have a hobby. Maybe they don't. Maybe their friends have all their friends all have jobs. Maybe they're 14 or 15 and they just sit around and they're bored. We would then say that person has too much time on their hands. My mom now lives in an old an old age home. And she said she likes keeping busy because she has so much time on her hands. So, she likes the fact that she can do different things throughout the day because it's not nice to have too much time on your hands. It's nice to be busy doing things and learning things or making things or reading things or learning English. Game time. So, game time refers to when a game starts. So, quite often people will say, um, are you going to watch the game tonight? Yeah, what's when's game time? Or what time does the game start? Um, or you might even uh, say this as an expression. Like in our house, if we know the Toronto Raptors, if the game starts at eight, at eight o'clock, Jen might say, oh, game time. Let's turn the TV on. So, game time refers to the time that a game starts. Usually, a sporting game. So, game time. It's game time. See you next time. This is the last slide by the way. This is me outside yesterday taking a picture. Um my hair does look a little more gray in that picture. Oh well, I should stop worrying about that. Every year around my birthday month, <laughs> I start to think about how gray my hair is but oh well. I'm not someone who will ever dye my hair. I'm just it's just too much work and it costs money. So, anyways, see you next time. So, I'm using the phrase next time to say see you next time. Uh, I hope you have a good week. I hope you have an enjoyable weekend and I hope you have a good day too. Hey, that was a little lesson on time phrases. I am going to kind of change up the Friday lessons a bit this summer. Um I usually teach a lot of vocabulary. I might do a few more lessons like this where I teach phrases on a specific topic. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. I am going to check if there are any questions. There are a few. Let me get the final questions on the screen and we will wrap this up. Uh let's see here. From Kui. Hi, hey teacher Bob. Did you hear a phrase they said Filipino time? It's a Filipino people habit of being late like an hour. I have not heard that phrase. I do know though that different people have different ideas about time. And I'm not gonna say anything about specific countries but I will say that even in my family, there are people who are very timely. There are people who are always on time and there are people who don't have a good sense of time and are often late. So, um I think in every part of the world, people approach time differently. That's how I'll answer that. And even in my little family, the uh I'm very timely. So, you can see I'm smiling because there are certain people who are late all the time. Gets a little annoying. Here we go. Freddie in holiday today. Very cool. Hi, Bob. I'd say that every Friday you're making your lessons in a time lapse for one hour. Is this sentence correct? This time lapse flies by too quickly. All the best to you. No, not exactly. You would probably say um my lessons last an hour. 
you probably would say that um yeah, I may it lasts an hour. That's how I would say. A time lapse would be if I took this video and compressed it into a minute. Like took um one frame of the video every minute. That would be a time lapse. So, anyways, all the best to you as well this week. Uh let's see here. Uh this is not on topic but I'll answer it. Abdi Coffee says, hey Bob, I hope you're feeling fantastic. I am feeling good. I have a question. How do you jump start your morning or day? Thank you. I jump start my day by going to bed on time. The best way for me to jump start my day is to have a good night's sleep. Some people jump start their day by having a cup of coffee. Some people jump start their day by going for a run in the morning. And if you're wondering what jump start means, it means to like get something going quickly to wake up. Let's see. So, last question from Crit. How do you use take time and spend time? Thank you. Yeah. So, I spend time with my mom and that means that I go and visit her but when I say I take time with my mom, it means that um I've intentionally decided to do it. You know, it's good to take time with people. It's good to sit down and spend time with them. I I guess they are kind of similar in a way. So, I'll leave it at that. John says, John from Brazil says, happy birthday, Mr. Bob, no matter what. Thank you. Why don't we just say this? My birthday on YouTube is always the day I do the second live stream on a Friday. So, what I will tell you is today is not my birthday. But what I will say is let's just say in the YouTube world, my birthday is always the 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 second Friday live stream uh, in July. That's that's gonna be my official YouTube birthday. It's not my real birthday. Although, no, I won't say anything. Thanks for watching. I gotta say bye to everyone now. Bye to John Wedge and Omika. I need my glasses here. And Hafiez and Chase's Overland Cat Team. Uh, Yukon and Truk, Tonkun, Renata, uh, Kima Kima, Anna. Um, buy to Moat Eggs and Brent from Speak English with this guy. Know that. John from Brazil. Uh, John Wedge. Ralph. Vitor. Hasu. Renata. Natalia87. Um, Julie Liu. Thanks to Dave uh, for moderating the chat. Buy to Sophia. Uh, yeah. See you next time. That's a good phrase, Dave. See you next time. Um, uh, and everyone else. I'm gonna wrap this up, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. You guys are awesome. And uh, I as well will see you next time.